Today's topic is a topic that I've always known about, but I never really thought to look into and research more of it. It was always something that was just in the back of my mind. But today's the day that we changed it, and I'm really glad that we're doing this because actually this topic is very interesting, at least in my opinion. I'm sure you've all heard of witches and witch hunts, like it's a popular topic. I don't think I know one person in my life that does not know what a witch is. But today's topic is not only about witches, it's about once again people being irrational, believing in something very strange, and just being very emotional about it. I'm happy to say that we're talking about the Salem Witch Trial. Welcome to Vox of Knowledge. So this topic is about witches and witch hunts and you know me I always like to go in deep and really analyze what was going on behind the scenes. In today's story we have a lot of accusations, trials and even executions but behind all that was something that we call mass hysteria. Mass hysteria is a phenomenon where you have people literally just lose it. That's like the best way I can describe it. Like they start believing in something strange and they just go crazy about it. Oftentimes that belief is irrational and if you're really being honest like it just makes no sense. Like sometimes you see what people are believing and you're like how do people believe such things? Like, this makes no sense. Like, why is there a lot of people believing in this? And why are so many people affected emotionally by this? Like, sometimes it just makes no sense. Now, we've talked about mass hysteria before. For example, in the video that I did a while back about the dancing plague of 1518, I think it was like 400 people who were all dancing for no reason. But that's not even the interesting part. What's interesting is that they all died literally until they died. Like, either from dehydration, heart attacks, or just pure exhaustion. Like, there was no reason for these people to just dance all the way until they died. Like, there there was absolutely no reason for it. We don't even know why it happened. Like we have a few theories, but really we don't know. They just did and it just really happened. It literally began with one woman who one day, I guess she just decided, you know what? I'm gonna go dance in a town square. And by the end of that same month, you had 400 people all dancing until one by one, they all collapsed and died. Like what? Like how does that make sense? If you haven't seen the video, I do encourage you to go check it out. It's very interesting, but it's also very weird. The Salem Witch Trials is a case of mass hysteria. Like you had people who believed in a super natural and witches, they would accuse their fellow villagers of witchcraft and even executed them in trial. Like we're in for a great story, but as always, let's put all this in historical context and get some background. The Salem Witch Trials was really just a wave of superstition of witches that happened in the late 17th century in Massachusetts, United States. But this wave was actually pretty late. By that time, Europe had already tried and killed over 40,000 witches in their own witch hunt and that lasted for like 300 years. So Salem really was lagging behind. And just to give you a little overview, in Massachusetts, you actually had two Salem's, one city that was more like a port, it was more commerce driven, and then you had a small village of like 500 people about 10 miles inland. Both towns were in colonial America and both had their fair share of problems, like we've seen before how life really wasn't the best in the early days of colonization. If it wasn't the local Indians who seemed to always want to attack you, then it was the cold winter so really nobody was prepared for, and if it wasn't that then it was the tensions between the people, because whenever there's people, there's always tension, like people can't live in peacefully it seems, like there's always going to be some sort of tension. And and of course, it doesn't help that belief in superstition at the time was very high. Like these people believed in ghosts, they believed in vampires, werewolves, and just pretty much anything. Like they believed everything. Considering the fact that Europe had just gone through a 300 year period witch hunt and that Massachusetts was a colony of England and England was part of Europe, I think you know where this is going. I mean, just think about it. Like you have tensions in the village, you have rumors of witches going on in Europe, and you have this constant belief in superstition. Like there's absolutely no way that this story would have ended well, especially not considering what was about to just happen. So here's how the story starts. In the small town of Salem, not the big commercial one, but really the small village, in the year 1692, there was this family that had one girl and two black slaves. Now, slavery was not banned. In fact, this was during the time of the transatlantic slave trade, which meant that having a slave really wasn't all that uncommon, especially not a black slave. One day in January of that year, the little girl and two of her friends started to display some very strange behaviors, like behaviors that really were not being seen before. They would have spasms, they would make weird, unhuman-like noises, and their bodies would contort in really just strange positions. Like the father, obviously like worried about his daughter and her friends, wanted to get help and really try to alleviate the situation. The doctors obviously had no idea what was going on, like they had no explanation. Like not only was medicine and science really not evolved like we have them today, but even then like there's not that many diseases that make you look like you're possessed. Like today we might be able to diagnose it, but back then forget it, like there's no chance. So now you have these three girls, they're displaying some very strange behaviors and you can't explain it with medicine or science. Like what do you do? You literally have no choice but to go to the supernatural, like this was 17th century what other options were there? And since everybody knew of witches in Europe and the little girls were looking like they were possessed, which is something that a witch could do, 
naturally, rumors started to spread that they were witches in the local town of Salem. So what is a witch? Well, a witch is somebody who supposedly has sold their soul to the devil in exchange for his loyalty to them. The devil would then grant you supernatural powers that you could use to harm other people. And the colony in Massachusetts was a Christian colony. So they believed in the devil. They believed that you could sell your soul to the devil. So witches made sense. So they went to try to find a few suspects to really try to make sense of what was going on with the girls. Like, why were they acting so weird? The first suspect was one of the black slaves from that same family. The second suspect was a beggar. And the third one was just a social outcast. The reason they were the first suspects was because, well, they were social outcasts. They were weird. They were strange. They were not really part of society. They were not arguably contributing that much to society. It was just easy to blame them. But it wasn't only their status. Like, the black slave was most probably from the Caribbean or from Africa which meant that there were high chances that she was practicing some sort of voodoo. And I mean, from an outsider's perspective, like don't get me wrong, I have nothing against voodoo. I'm just saying that when you don't know what voodoo is, it kind of looks sketchy, right? Like you have this doll, then you have like the thing that you stab the doll with. Like I'm sure there's more to voodoo than that, but just really, if you don't know what this is, if you're in the 17th century and you see somebody do voodoo, like you're gonna think it's a witch. But they were also not going to church. And in that time, if you didn't go to church, well, there was something wrong about you. Like that said something about you. Like why would you not go to church? Like do you not believe in God like do you not want to make God happy like what is wrong with you like it was easy to blame those people the village took these three accusees they brought them to court and they tried them the first two the beggar and the social outcast they denied the accusations but the slave she did it most likely under pressure she confessed and really she just told the whole story she said how she sold her soul to the devil how there was a book with kids names on it and most importantly how there were other witches in the town of Salem now come on don't say that like that is the worst thing that you can say in such a situation like don't say that you sold your soul to the devil don't say that there are other witches in Salem because really you just gave the village all they needed to really start panicking like that's how the mass hysteria begun after that more people suddenly started to display symptoms of being possessed and more witches were being accused and more witches were put to the trial things got even worse when the people accused were people of the church because up until that point I said that the accusees were usually social outcasts, but now it was people from the church, which meant that nobody was safe, like anybody could be blamed and anybody could be a witch. Like just imagine like the situation, like anybody and everybody could be a witch. You had to be on guard at all times, like you could not trust anybody. Like it was a vicious cycle. The more you heard about witches, the more scared you were and the more scared you were, the more you were going to accuse people of being witches and the more you accuse people of being witches, the more witches you think are in Salem, which really makes you that much more scared. Like once you're in the cycle, there's no way out it's like a downward spiral just think about living in Salem at the time like you see people being possessed you see people being accused of witches being put to trial and even executed and you know that nobody is safe like even members from the church can be accused of being witches like it must have been a very interesting experience the town of Salem killed 20 witches 14 women and six men but that's a very small number compared to the 40,000 that Europe killed but Europe had like 300 years to do that and the events in Salem took place in like the span of a few months the only problem with Salem and these accusations was that they required no empirical evidence like it was just enough to have a dream about a witch to get that witch into trial and have her executed for being a witch that's not really a proper way to conduct a fair trial but it's understandable given the situation given the paranoia in Salem because really people just were so afraid they just wanted the witches to be gone because well you wanted to protect yourself and your family right if you heard of a witch you didn't care if there was proof or not like you were so scared you wanted to see that witch dead and you were ready to just do anything to get her killed the evidence problem is actually what ended the witch trials in Salem because people just realized that hey wait a minute we don't actually have real proof that these people are witches what if these witches are innocent like we might be killing innocent people that's what one man realized he realized that the evidence that they were using to put these people to death was not enough it was not actual proof and luckily he had enough influence to really change the way that the court system works he believed that it was better to have 10 potential witches in Salem just roaming around than to kill an innocent person like he valued the lives of innocent people more than he valued the threat of potential witches the town of Salem eventually apologized for what they did they even offered financial compensation to the families of those affected but really it was too late like the damage had already been done the reputation of Salem was gonna be there for centuries to come but now that we got the history out of the way let's actually go back and just dive a little deeper and look at really what happened and why it happened I want to look at something specific. I want to look at how mass hysteria works and just really show you how dangerous it can be. I mentioned that right after the confession in court about the devil and the other witches, people suddenly started to display symptoms of being possessed by witches. Like, how does that happen? Like, what's the connection? Well, it's actually something very interesting. Like, the people of Salem were already scared about witches. Like, there was this whole craze going on in Europe. And they already knew about witches. They were already superstitious about witches. So the fact that a witch had just been confirmed in their village and that there was proof that there were more witches only added to that fear. And when people are scared, they do very bizarre things. There's something called the placebo effect in which you display symptoms 
symptoms of something just by purely believing that you have it. Like you don't have to have the disease, just you believe that you have it and you display the symptoms. There is no doubt that the people in Salem were so scared to be attacked by a witch that any small strange behavior from anybody could have potentially triggered something. These people most likely had nothing wrong with them. I mean, as far as we know, witches don't exist. Yet they displayed the symptoms of being possessed. Like they had the symptoms just by believing that they were attacked by a witch. And that to me is fascinating. In today's times, we don't really see that much of a mass hysteria going on because we just know a lot more about medicine and science. But it doesn't mean that the mass hysteria is not there. Some of my modern videos are prime examples of that, like the dot-com bubble and even Y2K are prime examples of mass hysteria. Like in Y2K, people literally believed the end of the world was coming like how much more crazy can you get if you think about it it's entirely normal like isn't it just easier to just accept what everybody else believes instead of thinking for yourself like thinking requires effort and we don't always have the energy to do that like people have jobs people have kids people have responsibilities there's no time there's no energy to think for yourself it's a lot easier to just say you know what I'm gonna accept what everybody else says, I'll trust in that, and if everybody else panics, then I'm gonna panic as well. Like, I think we're all guilty of this. In Salem, it took one man to realize that, hey, maybe we're doing something wrong. Maybe there's something wrong with the way we're trying these people. Maybe we should stop. And guess what? When that man woke up, he spread his ideas around, and suddenly more people started to wake up, and they all started to realize that it was very bad what they were doing in Salem. That's how you break a mass hysteria. So that kind of covers the topic of the Salem Witch Trials. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave it a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe because it really does help me out a lot and it shows me that you enjoy my content. And now it's time for questions. What do you think about mass hysteria? Like, do you have any other examples? Like, what do you think about people who just choose to believe what everybody else says and just not really think for themselves? Please do leave me a comment. I would love to know and bonus points for you if you do leave a comment. You might get featured in next week's video as a fan of the week. As you know, and as I say at the end of every video, I haven't talked about everything. And the things that I did talk about, I haven't gone into too much detail. That's okay. I'm actually doing this on purpose because I want you guys to go out and research more on your own. My name has been Darius Cosden. You can follow me on social media. The links will be in the description. It's been an absolute pleasure and I will see you all next week.